Hello there, Shane Olson here. I'm trying a brand new stream setup. So hopefully you all can hear me okay. Please let me know if you can. All right, well, hopefully this is working. Yeah, I think it is. <laughs> Um, today we're going to be, uh, hey, what's up, Mark? Can you hear me okay? Just making sure. And does it sound like my regular microphone? Hey, Neil. I need to try something out here. Hey, check this out. Boonk. <laughs> nice. All right, all right working audio is good all right great so I wish I could show you this but this is working awesome all right so I'm gonna share this share share and All right, sweet. All right, I'm gonna actually hide the comments because um, I can see them and I'll just highlight the ones that uh, I wanna answer. So yeah, let's just try that. Um, boom, there we go. So I now have this over the shoulder shot too, if you guys can see it on the on the left there. So I thought that was kind of cool. Um, yeah. Thanks, Neil. Okay, so let's get let's get going here. Why is this not snapping though? Okay, there we go. There it goes. Okay. Weird. It decided not to snap for some reason. <laughs> All right. So how are you guys doing today? Doing pretty good. Yeah, I'm trying to up my sculpting or my my production live streaming game. And I've been having a lot of fun with it. <laughs> and you guys can't hear the music, correct? Hopefully. All right, Sasa, I got to I got to highlight this comment. <laughs> you guys see this comment right here? Here, let me move it to right there. There we go. That's better. Nice. No music? Okay, great. All right, not that uh, you guys don't want to hear my music, but hey. Okay, so this is another uh, concept by Josh Black. I always love to model Josh's stuff, as you know, if you've seen me before. I, I Josh is one of my favorite concept artists ever. And uh, yeah, I really like modeling his stuff. So let's get to it. Um, need to assess this. Uh, this head is just one big old shape. So I think I'm going to keep it just one solid shape that's just the, an elongated sphere. Partially because uh, it's funny. So Okay, make sure my symmetry is turned on. That's where his neck will be. Hey, Brad. For some reason, Okay, for some reason, my hotkey wasn't set. Hey, Unstable, how you doing? Welcome, welcome. All right. Hey, 
Hey, Harry. <laughs> Unstable molecules. Did you change your name? <laughs> nice. I like it. guy's head shape is, is hilarious. So I'll work out the, the, the crazy lips in a little bit. Hey, Hugo, thank you so much. Oh, it's kind of, I wonder if I can shrink this size, maybe. There we go. Yeah. I got this really cool like chat highlighter. I'm using this program called Ecamm on the Mac. And I really, really like it. Yeah, Neil, you should. That would be uh, that would be awesome. It comes in like that on YouTube since it's my name, my channel. Oh, I see, I see. Okay, interesting. So if you were on Twitch, it, you would be Harry Mandibles, and okay, got you, got you. But since you're over on YouTube, I see. Took me a minute. Okay. Um, now his lips come way out and his nose comes way out and he's got huge ears. So let's just start to get those things in place before we start, uh, anything else here. Let's get a nose in there. Oh, interesting. Okay. Yeah, I did. I did see that they did that. So... Interesting. Okay. Yep. I haven't seen your wizard yet, Neil. Okay, let's see. Nose. Didn't mean to do that. I rotated instead of scaled. Will I do a portfolio review someday? Um, possibly. I know uh, Tomas does it and he streams later on tonight. I, I do, I do portfolio reviews for my students all the time. I just don't do, I haven't done any for the general public, but I may. Okay. Now I think, well, let's get the rest in. I was going to say, I think I want to, um, Z remesh this right away, but uh, I think I'm gonna wait just a little bit until I get all the pieces and I'll remesh everything all at once. Yeah, Hugo asked if I did uh, portfolio reviews. I like your, uh, I like your avatar, Hugo. <laughs> That's nice. There's a way to make the comments disappear after a while. I just wanted to look at how to do that, but I'll we'll have to do that. <clears throat> yeah, Brad, it's not a bad idea. Let me just see here. Okay, one second here. Stream. I'm just looking at uh, looking up comments here. Hmm. I can't find it. Neil, I know this is kind of a off off the cuff ask for you, but would you mind looking? for 
um, Ecamm Live uh, comment preferences. <laughs> if you have a second, please. So you guys don't have to sit and watch me do search for them. <laughs> I know there's a way to just have them on the screen for a limited amount of time and they just go away on their own. Cause right now I'm having to manually click them off. Oh, it's your cat dog fan art. Awesome. Oops, <laughs> didn't mean to do that. Okay, let's shape these ears. Hey Thomas, um, it is a 27. Yeah, so Thomas asked if it was a Cintiq 24. <laughs> Kimmy, yeah, <laughs> self-portrait for sure. <laughs> oh, too funny. Thanks, Neil. I'm checking it out. Be hidden automatically after changing scenes. I can you, Brad? Can you or Brad? Sorry, Neil. Can you tell me where to find that? I don't know if you can. Sorry for the hassle. Hey Dante, how you doing? Welcome, welcome. Okay, let's see here. I really like the comment thing, but it's kind of a um, high maintenance because I have to go move my mouse, click on the comment. Hey, Ika, how you doing? Okay, let's see. Okay, yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, I found preferences, but I was just find, trying to find the... the specific thing to that about comments. Automatic, oh, there we go. Okay, got it, I got it. Thank you. Yay, all right, found it. Thank you. Thank you, thank you, all right. All right. That should work now. His ears are very low. Okay. This the the shape of his head is like an eggplant. <laughs> I love it. Okay. And then, you know, for his lips, I think I'm actually going to block it out. I, I don't typically do that, but for this specific one, I think I will. Okay. Okay. 
because it's such an interesting mouth that it's like so pushed up. Thanks, Neil. Um, yeah, I'm, I'm thinking about going live on Thursdays, but I'm not quite sure yet. Oh, hey, Ariel, thank you so much. Welcome to the stream. Appreciate it. <laughs> what a weird mouth, right? Let's turn on Accu Curve. I think it's long, like his mouth is longer than the nose. <laughs> kind of originates from around the sides of his nose here. I'm going to have to Z-remesh this one for sure. I don't have enough geometry. Well, you know what I can always do is I can always add a subdivision and then hit delete lower. And that will give me more geometry. And I can do uh, auto groups to put everything in its own group and then do mirror and weld. Um, today there are a few toy oriented companies, sculptures oriented to children. I would like to work for a company like this one day. Yeah, there are plenty. There are a lot, a lot more than you would imagine. I mean, if you just walk down the toy aisle at your local store, you'll see a lot of toys for kids. And, um, it's not, they're not mostly just made by one company. They're made by several. And a lot of those companies hire freelancers, outsourcers, or, uh, people that actually work on site on those company at those companies like at Funko and Hasbro and places like that. So, um, Hey, what's up, Tom? How are you? Oh, you thought you were going to deform the head for my, for his mouth. I, I was going to, but I changed my mind. <laughs> Okay, let's turn on top of logical and just kind of push this back a little bit. You know, I'm, I did a toy, uh, a freelance, I did one for QFig. I'm still waiting for that one to show up. And of course I have all the ones from Disney Infinity on the store shelves, which is, well, I don't, they're not on the shelves anymore, but at the time that was crazy fun to see. Every nose has its thorn. <laughs> oh man, it totally looks like a thorn. Uh, can you talk about the character please? Like sharing your tips and tricks and explain how you're blocking. Um, yeah, I mean, I'm just looking at the concepts and I'm just kind of uh, looking at the shapes and the volumes in my head and just trying to evaluate and assess and reverse engineer what Josh has drawn here. Um, okay, I kind of want to, and that's what, and then I just, I just kind of add a new, a new piece and then I react to it. And also, for those of you who don't know, I do teach a full online course walking you through every single step.
And you can find information on that over at 3dcharacterworkshop.com. <laughs> and you'll be broke buying them all. Yeah, yeah. Thank you so much. There you go. Thanks, Neil. Thanks, me. All right. So I'm going to have to work out kind of what's going on here with this. I'm trying to get this. See this line Josh has drawn here? I'm, I'm kind of using where this ends. Currently working on number one from Stranger Wor New Worlds. Oh yeah, 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 so great. Do you know who made the Star Wars Hasbro probe droid? I do not. Hey, hey Rin, how you doing? Welcome, welcome. <laughs> Thanks, Ika. <laughs> okay, I'm gonna Z-remesh this at this point, I believe. Um, and then just keep going. Another Genshin. <laughs> nice. Surprise! <laughs> I like to tease you, Ika. That's awesome. Your your characters, I'm gonna I, I have to say, they're getting better and better each one you do. They're fantastic. Okay, I'm just gonna Z remesh this just at five thousand and see what we get. It's probably gonna be way too dense, but uh maybe not. Okay. Oh goodness. How long did it take you to learn how to get this, the right scaling when making different models? Um, well, I've been at this for a long, long time, meaning modeling characters. And it's just, just through practice. I've been doing it for, uh, I don't know, 22, 23 years, something like that. So um, yeah, I've just had a lot of practice with pr measuring and practicing volumes and things like that. But I've seen people, uh, you know, get it within the first six months to a year. Okay. Up to midnight. Yeah, I wouldn't say it's not going to take you 22 years. I'm just saying that's how much experience I've had, um, you know. So, yeah, I wouldn't get too overwhelmed or, or, you know, I'd be determined. And you're on your own journey. Everybody's on their own journey. So I wouldn't compare yourself to me or anybody on ArtStation. Just compare yourself to yourself. So learning a new new ways to make them with each other. Oh, each, each character. Yeah, yeah. Learning more and more techniques. <laughs> First 20 years is the most difficult. Yep, yep, I can attest to that. <laughs> okay. Hello and welcome to the stream. Prush on. This is going to be a quite interesting character. Let's see if I can pull it off. I'm going to split unmasked points. Yeah, practice is the secret sauce. <laughs> uh, name app. This is ZBrush. Um. I have a question. I made some really high poly character with a lot of detail in ZBrush. 25 millions. Oh goodness. I'm planning retopology. Is there something to do to make it a bit less? Yeah. Uh, I would, um, 
I would decimate your model. So you can find that under Z plugins called Decimation Master. So then you can take it over to, you can decimate it, which will reduce its size. And then you can take it over to um, a application that w is good at retopology, like Maya or something like that, Cinema 4D. Um, yeah, decimate for sure. Uh, when do you stitch everything together? Uh, shortly. After I have all the pieces in place. Not all the pieces, like all the pieces that I'm going to stitch together. Okay, let's see. I'm actually going to duplicate these and make them into the eyelids using the clip curve brush. Yep, Decimation Master. Uh, just look up tutorials on Decimation Master on how to use it. It's perfect. Thank you very much. Um, why does ZBrush hang every time I have poly groups on even with just a 1 million model? It shouldn't. Um, hmm. Yeah, maybe, maybe send, uh, maybe send an email to, um, support and, and see, I, I'm not sure. I'd have to look at the model. Let's see. Yep. Yep. Decimation master. Um, All right. Best advice I ever got is to add and react and check your measurements. Take your time whilst your learning speed will come. It may have been from the person in the camera. <laughs> That's me. Hey. <laughs> you may need to reinstall the plugin. Oh, like the Decimation Master plugin? Yeah, possibly. I'm just working on his eyelids here, trying to get them to go inwards. They go really far towards each other. Or I guess really close to each other <laughs> is a better way to say it. Make those eye cavities. Hey, I'm doing well, thank you. Hello from France. Welcome, welcome. Nightbot's a little late. <laughs> this already happened, Nightbot. But yeah, you can watch that, uh, that broadcast on um, the ZBrush Live YouTube channel. Get over here. That was a lot of fun. You know, it's funny. Um, that was a, a, a pre-recorded event, but I came in at the end to do, um, to do Q and a after the fact. And, um, that was interesting. It actually made me nervous because I'm so used to doing live events, you know? Oh, thanks, Nick. Uh, 
Um, let's see. I'm curious, do you do one-on-one -on -one teaching? I'm trying to learn how to build small avatar and make into breedable on a 3D of second life. Um, so I do, I have what's called an acceleration program where it's not one-on-one, -on -one, it's group coaching calls. So um, if you're interested in that, interested in joining us, uh, it's a very small group of students. It's more expensive than my regular course, of course, but if you want to um, learn more about that, just send me an email at shane.olson at 3dcharacterworkshop.com and I'd be happy to give you some information on that. There you go. Thanks, Neil. Um, how much time per day do you recommend to progress and assimilate the block out and the anatomy? Um, I, it's, it's, a, it's a horrible answer, but the answer is as, as long as it, uh, as it takes. So just practice, 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 because people learn at different rates. Uh, do you print models yourself? I see cool collection in the background. Indeed, yep, I, I do. I print uh, all the models in the background you see here are all models that I've printed of, of my own models, yeah. So. It's awesome. I highly recommend the program. Yeah, Brad's that Brad is one of my um, acceleration students. Thanks, Brad. Appreciate it. Okay, let's see here. I must have some polls going on down here. Yeah, you're welcome. Some weird topology on this mouthpiece down here. This is super strange <laughs> mouthpiece. In a display, let's see, in a display graphic tablet, wouldn't our hand obscure the model that we're working on? Uh, yeah, I mean, just like paper and drawing on a with a pencil on paper. Um, yeah, my my hand does obscure it somewhat. You can kind of see it on my Cintiq right here. But the precision you get, I actually tried a tablet for a little while. And um, I tried, because this takes, you can see how much room on my desk this takes up. It's a ton of room. And I wanted to get, you know, uh, just use a tablet instead. And uh, tablets just are just fine. Um, but they, they're, they're less precise. So that's all you're gonna get with a, a screen tablet is uh, more precision. Um, what are the differences are there between your regular course and this other course you mentioned? Are there any extra requirements? So yeah, it is, it is a, uh, vetted. I only let certain people in and you have to be a certain level, um, as far as your skills go. It's not for newbies. It's not for new people. It's for people trying to hone their portfolio to get work in the industry. That's, that's basically what it's meant for. So, um, it's a, it's coaching. So you have to have the original course and then I coach you, uh, through making your characters better. That's the idea. That's why it's called the accelerator program because you're, uh, I help you learn faster because you have feedback, like personal feedback. And it's almost one on, I mean, you, if you're in the, acceleration program, you're going to get feedback. So, but it's not just a one-on-one -on -one coaching. You know, you don't, you don't just pay for one session. It's like six months long. So don't your arms get tired drawing on a tablet? I mean, I, yeah, they can get tired, especially if I'm modeling for like eight hours straight or 10 hours straight, you know, I mean, I take breaks for lunch and stuff, but yeah, they, they can get tired for sure. Okay, let's see if I can do 
Um, I gotta work on this low, this mouth. It's kind of bugging me here a little bit, a lot bit. Give him some nostrils. Okay, and then it's gonna be kind of weird. I'm gonna actually split this off into its own piece. So you can isolate something and then click on split hidden. Um, also this user interface and this menu that I keep popping up right here, I give all of that away for free over on my website. It's 3D Character Workshop right here. And just it's 3dcharacterworkshop.com. You can just go grab those for free. Scroll about halfway down the page and you can see it. Okay. Yeah, I want to make it not so pointy from the top. Um, can I explain about displacement map? I don't use displacement maps very much because I come from the world of games. I'm a game developer and uh, game engines do not support displacement maps. They support normal maps. That's better. Okay. Hey, Paxty, how you doing? Thank you so much. I appreciate it. Okay, I'm actually going to um, turn off dynamic topology, subdivide it once, delete the lower topology so I have more. And then um, displacement maps are used for, um, yeah, they're, they're used for television and film, mainly. And so, and they're also used with uh, subdivision levels. So if you're using like Cat McClark subdivisions and you subdivide your mesh up a lot, then you apply a displacement map and it's a black and white map that will actually displace the geometry because there's enough geometry there to displace. With games, games are very light meshes. And so one, there's not enough geometry to displace and two, game meshes don't support subdivision levels or displacement maps. So what are you saying? Have you thought about Zooming in your shoulder cam a bit more. Um, let's let's see. I can. I can try it. I control it on my phone here. I think that's my BRV. I'm trying to see which one is which here. Okay. Dink. Oh, there you go. Thanks, Neil. Yeah, Mike Michael Pavlovich has one. I like a cartoon style. Well, thank you so much. Nat, welcome to the stream. And do you render your work in ZBrush or other pro programs like Maya? Um, I like to render my stuff in ZBrush um, if it's a cartoony style. And uh, ZBrush just barely did in, an interview with Dan Eater, and he talks about his uh, 
cartoony comic booky style in the way he renders and he teaches how he does it. Um, one, one second here. I picked the wrong camera. Let's see. I don't think I can go back. Okay, it's the second one. Um, and then I also render in key shots. I render in Blender. There's a whole bunch of different places that I'll take my models to render. Okay, it's this one. Okay, let's see if I can get closer. I don't know that I can. No, that's as close as I can get without moving the actual camera. I can zoom out a little bit, but I can't get closer than that right there. Um, it's E-D-E-R, Edder. What are my favorite cartoons? Um, I have a lot. Um, yeah, I don't, you know, my, I, I guess my favorite cartoon of all time is Avatar The Last Airbender. I, I really, really like Avatar. And I like Gravity Falls. <laughs> oh, funny. Okay. Um, how many years have I been using ZBrush? Um, about eight, but five seriously, maybe six, six seriously, something like that. Hey, what's up, Angry? How you doing? Um, yeah, could you? There you go. I'll put it up on the screen. There you go. Not that you can copy and paste from that, but. Okay. This is hilarious. <laughs> Um, do you think it's a good idea to render in Marmoset or Unreal Engine if you want a portfolio for video games or does it matter? Yes, that's a great idea. Um, I always recommend my students render in either Marmoset or um, um, what's the real time blender render? Uh, gosh dang, not Cycles, but the other one. Or um, yeah, or Unreal or Unity or any of those. Um, do you have any recommendations on 2D artists who draw expressive stylized characters to follow for sculpting reference? Um, I have a huge and big fan. Thanks. Yeah, thank you. Um, I have a Pinterest page where I collect a bunch of uh, artists that I like to uh, follow down the rabbit hole, as it were. Um, yeah, Evie, thank you. Um, the And my Pinterest is Shane Olson Art. And it's called Inspiring Characters. That's the name of the board. Okay. There you go. <laughs> this guy. Uh, 
Oh, um, yeah, sorry, I missed a question. Um, somebody asked about a Mac. Can you post that question again? Thank you very much. You know, I might just leave this mouth as a separate piece. I'm really liking this, uh, this separation here. Use Photoshop to color the character or no, I, I usually use uh, ZBrush. The, I usually use poly paint and I'll be coloring this shortly. Um, how long have I been scoped? Uh, streaming now. Looks like 46 minutes. Okay. Hey, Gambit, how you doing? Oh, you were wondering if I knew of any issues with running ZBrush on a Mac versus Windows? Nope. And I'll tell you what, I personal experience, I'm running a Mac Studio Max right now, not the Ultra, just the Max. And it is, I'm streaming, um, I have a, a huge monitor and my Cintiq and I'm using ZBrush right now and it's not even, we, you know, it's, it's not batting an eye. It's really, really nice. And I have a, um, a PC that has an AMD 6, I wanna say a 6000 in it with dual 1080s uh, GPUs. And it runs ZBrush just fine and all that kind of stuff. But I feel like this is um, standing up to the performance of that pretty, pretty well. But uh, I, I really wanted to use this Ecamm live streaming program that I'm using right now. And uh, yeah, it's just got some really nice features um, because I'm gonna be streaming on my own channel soon and I wanted to step up my live streaming game. But I'm also, that also means I'm stepping up my live streaming game here on ZBrush Live as well. But I'm gonna be streaming um, other programs on my live, on my channel. And my channel is, uh, on YouTube, it's 3D Character Workshop. You can find it over there. There you go. Thanks, Neil. In fact, I have a I wanted to show you guys this other camera that I have. I can show you, and my my microphone doesn't come with me, so I'm gonna have to kind of shout, but I can show you some of these 3D prints here behind me if you wanna see them. So let me see if I can switch over to that camera. And I'm also tethered with my headphones. I'd have to switch headphones. What's your typical poly? poly point count for animation characters and for nice poly paint. Well, those are two separate things. So for my poly paint, I don't really pay attention. I just need it to be dense enough to hold the color. Um, for game characters, I will usually turn that poly paint into a texture. Um, you can't use poly paint inside of uh, game engines too well. So, um, yeah, I'll, I'll, I'll go ahead and make textures out of those. Let's see here. Okay, let me let me switch over this camera for a second. Um, you have Instagram or Twitter, or other social media. I have ArtStation. Not for games, for more film animation. Same thing. You want to make texture maps. You don't want to use poly paint. Let's see. <laughs> right now the camera's right back here. Hold on a second. It's 
So this is a this is a character that I did when I worked on Disney Infinity um, with Jason Kim, my friend Jason Kim. He he sculpted most of it, but I helped him out. Um, I don't know if you can see this. You see this? Yeah. These are some of my 3D prints. This camera's not the best. It's kind of fuzzy. Yeah. This is my cowboy. I'm still... His arm... I still got to paint and glue his arm on. <laughs> so... Anyway, here, let me bring it with me here, I'll switch it, Ugh. here's my Cintiq, <laughs> okay, let me turn that off, it's all hot, <laughs> all right, um, my art station is uh, just Shane Olson. Mark, and it's funny. Um, yeah, everybody wants shortcuts. <laughs> uh, okay, let's let's continue blocking this guy out. I'm taking a while here. We'll block out his uh, his body here. Uh, could you explain why you don't want to use poly paint for texture maps? Well, so you can you can transfer your poly paint to a texture map. So I'll start with poly painting, and then I will either bake that information down to a texture map or transfer it in inside of ZBrush. So, um, Kemi, I'm only going to do the bust as you see in this uh, concept art right here. Um, are you still a member of the 3D modeling group on Facebook? You commented on one of my posts before. Oh, um, yeah, I'm sure. I don't really leave those groups too often, so probably. Hey mobile, welcome. How's it going? Okay, let's see. I'm just gonna kind of shape it like this. I've been floating around with ZBrush for a while, starting floating around with Blender and Animation more rusty animator. Sorry, this 28 challenge hasn't posted in over a week. I'm dying for more. I have substance painter, but so much more to learn. Yeah, there's a lot. There's a lot to it. A lot to it. Well, good luck with that. Subdivide this once. Just 
just evening up this topology so it's not so stretched through his neck. Very good character in your art station. <laughs> okay, thank you. <laughs> Thanks for the encouragement. funny if the concepts hair was literally those strands yeah you know i'm gonna i was gonna i was gonna try and just do a couple of curly strands like that i have an idea on how i want to do it so we'll see we'll see how it goes Got such a long neck, I'm trying to make it work. What's up, long neck? <laughs> there we go. Thanks for the good luck. I got a lot of info from watching you on Pixel Streamer the past four years. Maybe I can take courses soon. When's your next run? Uh, they're always open, actually. So if, you, if you're interested, yeah, just head on over and to 3dcharacterworkshop.com and check it out. They, I don't open and close it. It's just, it's a bunch of pre-recorded videos. So, and it's so you can go at your own pace and it's lifetime access. Start when you want. Okay. Uh, when I started a long time ago, yeah, I would open and close it, but um, I wasn't too big of a fan of that. Because it wasn't, it wasn't that, it wasn't very genuine, you know? I just wanted people to be, because people are busy, I just wanted people to be able to just join it, do it on their own time. Okay. Yeah, there's a great community there. Thanks for uh, reminding me, Brad. So there's, uh, let's see. Hold on a second. I can actually show my show my screen now. So I have a, a student forum, which looks like this. Um, and you can see I have a top row, kind of like ZBrush Central. Um, and here's one of Brad's pieces right here. You can see some of the student work being done in there. Lots and lots and lots of great work. And I also have a, uh, a private student Discord channel where you can go hang out and a lot of students like Brad will, will hang out in there and sculpt live. You can ask questions and do your thing. So, yeah. <laughs> yeah, like Raven. Let's see. <laughs> yeah, 
Yeah, we just talk about butt chins the whole time. <laughs> oh, this guy's head cracks me up. Okay, let's get some detail in this ear. Yeah, the off-topic channel in Discord is kind of like the Wild West. Hey, David, how you doing? Okay, I'm going to split this. And then, um, what I've been enjoying doing recently is flood filling my different pieces and parts as I go with... Uh, what this is, is a tessimation. So I'm basically um, filling this with Sculptress Pro geometry. So now what I can do, I can, if I need more density, I can just kind of crank this up a little bit. Make sure I turn dynamic off. <laughs> Baron's chat. I got that reference. <laughs> it is kind of like Baron's chat. Yes, man. That's, that's a long time ago. Okay. If you guys don't know, um, Baron's, the Baron's is a, a place in wow world of Warcraft. And it's such a big, vast open area that you just get this random people yapping in there <laughs> about the most random stuff. That's too so funny. Um, do you stitch everything once the shapes are finalized? Yes. And what's cool about this, this workflow um, that I've, I've kind of developed over the last few months is um, you can basically, if you use the, the stitch that is called Remesh by Union, um, I stumbled across it one day. I'm like, oh, I wonder if this will work. And it actually works really, really nice, uh, even better than Dynamesh. So for the longest time, I would use Dynamesh because it's nice to uh, stitch objects together. But the problem with Dynamesh is it will rebuild your entire mesh. And sometimes it'll actually uh, bridge gaps that you don't want to necessarily bridge. And Remesh by Union does not do that. So now it allows me to do like detail out some sections like this ear, for example, and then stitch it in later and I won't lose my edge, edge work or detail. So now I can turn on Sculptress Pro. Oh, since I'm on my Apple, I don't. Hey, thanks couch, how you doing? Hey, I can see your face. <laughs> nice. I can also highlight chat and I love, I love it. Remesh by union, then regular remesh fixes the merged areas. Yeah, if you decide to remesh, you don't always have to remesh. It depends on what you're what you're doing. Or you can always, you know, just do retopology afterwards, like by hand if you want. Um so I gotta go to stroke. Turn off adaptive size. There we go. But let's crank that down a little bit. That's better. Okay. <laughs> you kind of look like me, Couch. I love your style. <laughs> for better or for worse, right?
All right. Yeah, I, I don't have my, um, my ZBrush startup utility set up with my Apple yet. See, it's just more work when I am trying to self make an animation trailer this year by Christmas. So I try to do quick and dirty with the model. Yeah. Hey Ash, how you doing? Yeah, I'm, I've leveled up, <laughs> leveled up. So actually this is, I, I went and got me a Mac studio and um, there's this app called Ecamm Live, which is kind of like OBS, but it's a paid OBS. So you can set up things like, like this over the shoulder shot and this, and yeah, it's pretty cool. So, um, and I can highlight, highlight uh, chat messages and get rid of that little list off to the side which is cool. Yeah, I have a lot more too, but um, I'm saving that for my own, my own YouTube channel. I'm kind of upping my live stream game. How are you? I'm really, really enjoying it though. I can also broadcast my iPad so I can stream some other apps on there like some procreate and stuff. So if you guys didn't know who Ashley is, she is another live streamer on here. Amazing, amazing stuff. Oh, models, textures, and animation all by yourself. Uh, that's a that's a that's a big chunk to chew. Not gonna lie. <laughs> thank you, thank you. Yeah, Max Studio. I'm I'm super impressed with it. I'm not gonna lie. It's my PC sounds like a jet engine taken off, and this Max Studio is like silent. And I'm I'm pushing it pretty hard right now, and it's just super silent. Bidding on what I want to get help with the most right now. Animation or modeling. This guy isn't polished. Poly paint, but I started this animation challenge. Um, yeah, I don't... I, if I was doing an animation challenge, I would go download a character that existed and it was already rigged, and then I would animate that. Because I was an animator for five, for five years of my career, and that's what I would do if I wanted to practice animating. You don't need to know how to model... Modeling is my passion, but I animated as well. I like, I like them both. It's really fun to see your characters come to life. Yeah, Thomas, uh, Ash, a cubed, she streams on Wednesdays. She makes some phenomenal, awesome monsters. Actually, I honestly, I don't know how you do it. I'm not going to lie. I'd love some mocap. Man, you are a shortcut guy. <laughs> I worked on Advent Rising and we did 45 minutes of cinematics for that game with mocap. I have my share of mocap experience. Used to do the 11 second club. Yeah, that's what I'm talking about. That's a really good place to go practice, you know? And that's what I would do too. That's That's been around for a long, long time. 11 second club. It used to be, they had a 10 second club. <laughs> then somebody made the, I can't remember the history of it, but. People trying to tell me to do Mixamo? Yeah. Well. Do what you want to do. <laughs> K 
CalArts has a five second. Interesting. It reminds me of that. <laughs> I can't remember what movie it's on. Like 10 second abs. <laughs> Five minute abs. It was a movie with Ben Stiller. What was it? Something about Mary, maybe? Picks up that psycho killer. <laughs> Something about Mary, that's right. Oh, you can't even understand what I'm doing. Thanks. <laughs> I'm just sculpting. <laughs> yeah, well, that's right. Seven minute abs. <laughs> Nobody works out in six minutes, man. Because <laughs> uh, seven's not insane, but six is. Love that actor, too. Those are pretty good. <laughs> hey, zombie killer, how you doing? Welcome, welcome. Okay, let's save this out. Let's call this Josh guy, Josh Smoker. Uh, Harlan Williams. Um, do you do use custom brushes? Yeah, so all of the brushes across the bottom of this are all of, well, most of them are my custom brushes. All the ones with these weird icons. And I give them away for free over on my, on my website if you'd like to go grab them. It's at 3dcharacterworkshop.com. I give them away for free. Just go about halfway down the page and you can find them. I've had to switch to headphones and your music is slightly leaking in the background. Okay, I'll, I'll make it quieter. Thanks, Neil. These are, these are open back headphones, so. And I don't have a filter on my mic anymore. I gotta, I gotta add one. Hopefully they don't silence my audio on like Twitch and stuff. <laughs> hey Eric, how you doing? Okay, let's see. <clears throat> oh, I was going to do the map, the nose. That's right. But I was going to split it off. Did that not work? Why didn't that not work? Split hidden, there we go. So whenever I UV a head or face, I get some bad resolution around the mouth area. Any advice on how to solve that? Um, yeah, well, I mean, the jerk answer is add more geometry, right? But you want to add it in a, in a very uh, methodical way, like thinking about it, thinking about the edge loops and how they wrap. Um, there are two people that I go to for, well, three, actually, that I go to for face geometry 
and learning how to do it. One of those is uh, Sergi Culliber from Disney Feature. The other one is Brian Tyndall from, from Pixar. I don't know if he's at Pixar still. Um, and he actually has a kind of a book on facial topology. I think it's only available on the uh, Apple Store. And then the third one is, Neil, maybe remind me. The he has a, a whole book on his Gumroad page. It's it starts with a V. What's his name? He does most of his stuff in Moto, but he has a really really uh, some good information. It starts with a V. Gosh dang it! My old brain can't remember anything anymore. I think I am going to merge the nose with the head. Oh, thanks. William Vaughn. Thank you. That's the one. All right. Okay. I'm going to merge the head with the nose and the ears and smooth them all out. But I think I'm going to leave the mouth separate and the eyelids separate because I like those, the hard edge. And I want to try something with inflating the skin right next to those eyelids and seeing if I can get some overlap going right there and make it not look weird. See how it's like this old droopy skin overlap right there. Yeah, that'll be kind of fun to pull off. Know him since his light wave days. Yeah, yeah, yep, definitely. Okay, let's see. Stitchy stitch time. Let's turn dynamic off. Well. Okay, so what I do is I get them all close to the same density. Um, somebody was asking about stitching. Um, this is how I stitch. So you have to put them all in the same subtool. So here's the head, the nose, the ears. And then I merge them together. Like, yeah. Okay, so they're all in the same subtool. And they just have to be kind of similar in, ge in geometry as far as density goes. And then um, I put my gizmo in the center of the world, if you're going to do it uh, symmetrically. And then you just go into this gear and you click on remesh by union. And that will stitch everything together. And then you can check it out. You can kind of see these little triangles all around the edge of these pieces. And then click on this gear and hit accept. And now they're stitched. And now you can go smooth out the transitions. So for example, this is what I was talking about as far as it doesn't rebuild the mesh, it only stitches. So now turn on symmetry because it'll turn off symmetry, but I can come in here with smooth and just kind of smooth these out. And I can keep the sharp transitions where I want it to to stay, but say if I want to remove this one, I can and just keep it sharp right around this edge. Totally can. So same with this ear. Say it's got this sharp line right here. I want a smooth transition so I can just smooth it out like this. And then I can use this fill brush right here and just kind of fill the transition up a little bit. Let's 
something like that. Just fill it, smooth it, we're good. Then you can keep these sharp transitions across the back, for example. Okay. Is there any difference if you do it with Dynamesh? Yeah, there's a big difference. So just as I was explaining earlier, um, Dynamesh will rebuild your entire surface and it will kind of melt all of this stuff. So you'll lose all of your hard edges that you worked so, so hard to put in there. Um, so you don't want to do that. I, I've, I've moved away from the Dynamesh workflow. For that reason. And it will also sometimes bridge some of your geometry together. Like if your fingers are too close, it'll put, it'll kind of fill between your fingers with geometry. It drives me crazy. So I'm going to try this here. <laughs> so funny. It's like this droopy skin in front of his eyelids. to stick out that much on the sides, just from the front. That's such a cool flow with how fast Z-Remesher is on a current CPU makes Dynamesh feel like a relic. Yeah, for sure. But then the thing with, the thing with uh, Tessimation and Sculptress Pro is that in other programs it's called Dynamic Topology. Same thing, same idea. Um, it came from uh, Sculptress, this program called Sculptress a while back. And uh, it's since been used all over the place, but it, it's basically dynamic topology, dynamic tessellation. So you'll never run out of geometry is what it means. Um, it always tessimates it. It always it makes more as you need it. Unlike Dynamesh. Dynamesh, you have to rebuild your entire surface of your whole object every time you want more geometry. Um, is making 3D stylized MT something you've ever considered doing? If not, uh, yes and no. Um, I, yeah, I, I have some opinions about NFTs. I'm not, I'm not exactly sold on them. Um, I don't know if they're just a flash in the pan kind of a thing. So I'm weary. I'll just say that. I'm just, I'm weary of it. But if somebody's willing to pay for me to make a, a 3D character, you know, I, I don't do much uh, freelance anymore, but it's just, if somebody's paying for a character and it's, and it pays well and it's a freelance job, it's same as any other, you know? So I don't have any problems with that. If somebody's willing to just commission me or someone with uh as an nft you know yeah i'm not really a fan of game items as nfts as a gamer i'm not a fan of it All right, Thomas, thanks for hanging out. Have a good one. Okay. Uh, yeah, Paul, so you're saying it can also add 
add density depending on the brush size. So yeah, I, I tend to not like to work that way. I go into the, the brush, the stroke sculptress, and I turn off adaptive size. So the density is not tied to your brush size. It's tied to your scene size. Um, that way it's more predictable. Yeah, I'm, I'm not a fan of having it tied to your brush. I can't control it. Oops. Okay. I'm gonna give him some, um, give him some color if we want to. Be kind of fun. Uh. All right, let's make him kind of a, a grayish color maybe. Any fav any good books or favorites of yours for stylized characters in 2D or 3D? Um, hmm. I don't really do the book thing anymore because we have the internet. So I don't know if I have an answer to that, honestly. I do like the art of books, um, you know, for films and things like that, like the art of Wreck-It Ralph and that, you know, those books I like a lot. I give him kind of a, a blue polyester suit, like a light blue. of Keef. <laughs> I'm not, I don't know if I'm familiar with Keef, Mark. Oh, Keef. Got you. Like, okay. I'm like, Keef? You say Keef like I say Teef. <laughs> I love how Nightbot is like advertising something that's over. Thanks, Nightbot. Can ZBrush do dynamics? Uh, say you want to add cigarette smoke to a cigarette. No, not really. You'd have to do that in another program. Uh, so ZBrush is more of a digital sculpting program. So you could sculpt digital smoke um, like you would sculpt it out of clay, but you wouldn't be, you wouldn't really do dynamics like you would in a, another program, you know? Okay. Let's see. I'm gonna add some blue, a purple blue. Turn off Sculptus Pro for a minute. Let's crank up this RGB intensity. <laughs> 
Oh, funny. Yep. Well, thank you so much. Yeah, if you're an animator, there's some books. I actually have them sitting on my shelf back here. Like The Illusion of Life and, yeah, the... Um, oh, which one did you just say? Animator Survival Kit. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, it's like the book on animating for Disney back in the day. This guy cracks me up. All right, let's give him some eyebrows, shall we? Just get them in place and then we'll edit them. This is the topology brush if you're wondering. Use it all the time. <clears throat> you're getting huge Jack Lane character drives from the reference art in your sculpt. I could totally see this in Brown Derby. Yep, yep. <laughs> I can see that. So add some thickness with dynamic here and then uncrease all post sub div and here we go. Time we got 135. Okay. This guy's kind of coming together. All right. I got to stretch. So now that I have this eyebrow at this point, I found this really cool brush that I've been using lately. 
Let me crank up the smoothing level and hit apply. Oh, excuse me, goodness. Mm. So, and I just talked about it during the stream uh, with Maxon the other day. And it is this Scribe Standard Brush. And essentially, if I click on the head, it does this. So it, it, it gives you kind of this nice little uh, curve with uh, thin to thick to thin again. But what I'm gonna do with it is switch it around so it just goes from thin to thick. There we go, so it just does this. Oh, hey Kenya, how you doing? I'm using that brush, <laughs> the scribe brush. We all love, whoops, I gotta not be on the head. Let's see, and I gotta make sure I have enough density. Yeah, there we go. Okay. So basically it, it puts a carve down in like this. So I'm gonna subdivide it. Maybe, let's see what we got here. It's five. Subdivided up to, let's see, 500,000, sure. 500,000 uh, poly eyebrow. <laughs> That's not ridiculous at all, what are you talking about? All right. Just gonna kind of push this into the head a little bit more. And what I'm trying to achieve with this is to make it look like the hair is growing out of his head instead of just like a slab, like a, I mean, right now it kind of looks like a popsicle stick just shoved on his head, right? So let's make it look like hair a little bit and give it some where it's coming out of and where it's going into. Okay. So if I grab this, not this one, there's two of them. There's a, there's a scribe chisel and a scribe standard. The scribe chisel has profiles that come with it, but I just, the scribe standard's good enough to, to, uh, for what we're using it for. So thank you so much. Welcome, welcome. Okay. And I like to, um, start off of the object and go into it like this. Oh my gosh. Maybe the other way around. There we go. That way. Okay. Too big of brush. Yeah. And then after you've done your curve, you can just tap on the surface to get rid of it. And you can kind of see how it gives this really nice hard edge, crisp looking cut in there. And you can also do the opposite, meaning hold alt down. Yeah, it's not quite what I want. No, I'll have to just edit this after the fact, but that's essentially what I'm after, something like that. And I can come into it even from the side down here, if it would work. My curve is too bumpy. You can, and it is a curve brush, so you can grab the curve and pull on it to hopefully straighten it out. It doesn't always work. Yeah. Let's try it one more time. Gosh, sometimes it's good, sometimes not so good. Let's try. And eyebrows, typically you want them to go like, um, the 3D Character Workshop brush set is customized by you. Is it down for purchase? Um, so yeah, the, the brush is down here. I give away for free over on my website, 3dcharacterworkshop.com. It's just a, a handful of brushes that I've I've made. And yes, I give them away for free over there, so you don't have to buy them. One more. 
Mm, I wanted to go, well, that's as high as intensity as you can get. So let me just pull them into the head a little bit more. Because I want it to kind of go end in the head like this. And then I can grab this um, move brush with AccuCurve on it and then just pull out and exaggerate this a little bit more. after I'm done. Like that. Then it looks more like hair or wood. <laughs> Woody eyebrows. Let's make a long one. That's good. Yeah, sure. These are kind of too even up here, so I'm going to uneven them. Going back to move again, and... Something like that. We Fun. Okay. Yep, you're welcome. Okay, let's do... Need to fix his mouth. Give him a little smoky. <laughs> that lip. Oh my gosh. Okay, let's give him a cigarette. At the moment, my favorite brush is your pinch brush. I find myself using that the most. Yeah, that's what I just barely used on his lip. Uh, thanks so much. That started out as a, I, I have to give props to uh, Malicus the Black. It started out as a maw cut brush. And then I edited it somewhat. Okay. Split on mass points. And I'm gonna cut a bunch of down this, let's see. Hmm, 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 hmm. Maybe just one. Insert an edge because I want to uh, pinch this side. Like, like he's been, uh, close his lips down on it and squish this end so it tapers. And then we can make um, this one flat, or fatter, sorry, like this. And then I'll probably put that ash on as a separate piece. And then let's uh, insert some more so we can bend bend it along the, the length of it. How do you place your brushes along the bottom of ZBrush? Um, so you, you can uh, customize your user interface. And I actually have a YouTube video showing exactly how to do that. If you go check out um, 3D Character Workshop on YouTube, you can find that uh, that video. Um, Neil might put a link in there for you. Let's bend this a little bit like this. Oops. Yep, no problem. Who 
looks like a piece of grass. It's all green. <laughs> That's too funny. All right. And yes, it's perfectly straight out front right now, but eventually. So I don't know if you can get that link. Um, did you post it on uh, YouTube, Neil? Does it, is, are you able to post over there? to give him bloodshot eyes. <laughs> oh, Restream will send it over? Awesome. Very cool. Oh, goodness. Let's try that one more time. There we go. What do you mean? Oh, you watch the video to learn how to, to, to customize your user interface. Sweet. The link works. Awesome. Thanks, Neil, by the way. Need to do that. Need to switch brushes. I'm gonna actually give him some some eyelashes, and I'm just gonna use the geometry I already have. Let's do this. Yeah. Okay. Duplicate and do a save as really quick. I named it .ztl .ztl. Okay. A long time ago. Okay, so um, duplicate solo. And I want to just use <clears throat> just this edge right here. No, I don't. Is that dictation? What? Okay. Delete hidden. <laughs> Let's see. Yeah, that's what I want. Well, I want more. Maybe I'll just leave it going all the way through. Okay, and then... Um, Go out with this. <laughs> Sorry about that, guys. Doesn't happen too often. Thanks so much. <clears throat> okay. 
I don't know if that worked or not. Sorry about that. All right, job's done. Anyway, um, <laughs> yep, it's really working. <laughs> it's working, it's working. Uh, yes, I have. Yep, yep, yep. I like it. Okay, um, I'm going to extrude polygroup all. Go down this direction. Whoops, didn't mean to do that. Let's go like this. Just want to raise it up and then. Yeah, so good. <laughs> So good, so good. Okay, um, control to inflate. Yeah, there we go. Perfect. Yeah, I like it. Um, I know a lot of people have their, their grievances as everybody does. Well, all Star Wars fans do. <laughs> <laughs> uh, there we go. Ah, this guy's funny. All right. Yeah, I wasn't. I mean, at the end of the day, it's 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 entertainment, right? So I always ask myself, was it was I entertained? Yeah. Did I pay a lot of money to see that? No. <laughs> You know, so I, if, I don't know, I'm just, uh, more lighthearted about things like that than most people. I think I'm just happy that I get to see more star Wars. There we go. I'm not going to be able to get to the collar and stuff like that, but Are you kidding? Holy cow, no way. Wow. I have not I've yet to see that. Um yeah, I really want to go see it. <laughs> yeah, Paul, for sure. Okay, I'm going to at least put the, the lower collar on. Let me see if I can use the geometry. Yeah, okay. That's the easiest way to make clothing is use, well, easiest way to make anything, just like I made these uh, eyelashes. Rather than draw a new topology, just try and use existing topology and delete everything that's not what you're making. You know, that's what I always like to say. So, um, for example, I'm making this collar. I can, uh, well, I'm going to mask this out. I just kind of, whoops, what was that? And Well, I'm still trying to get used to these controls here. Bear with me, please. And masking only really works on, on uh, vertices, on the dots. So that's all you need to worry about. And then if you hit Control W, it puts all of your mask elements into a polygroup. And then what do you do? 
Delete everything that's not the collar. Yeah, honestly, I've I'm I've been loving, loving, loving it. That whole th series takes place when I was, um, you know, in in when I was in high school, and that's like my it's my jam. And I had the same haircut as like Mike <laughs> and yeah, over my ears and stuff. But, uh, yeah, the storytelling is like no other. And it's like a, an ode back to all of those Stephen King shows. And it's just, oh, it's just great, great cinema, great cinema. Love it. Love it. So it's not just my, my son, he was asking me if, if the reason I liked it so much because it was because of the nostalgia of it. And uh, honestly, that's part of it. Sure. But it's not the, the whole reason why, you know, it's just because it's good storytelling all around. And okay. So I want to bend this collar out. Sometimes you have to think and work smarter, not harder. So I have all this geometry down the length, right? Um, but I want, I want to push the collar out a little bit down and out. Um, and it's a little too high, honestly, it's like, it should be down here. Um, so, but I have too, too many cuts along the length. So I'm going to use the Z modeler brush and then hold down alt and tap on these and get rid of all of them because then all I have to deal with is the bottom. I can mask off the top um, and then send, send it to the middle and scale it out. I don't have to worry about all of the geometry going down the length of the thing. You know, the Duffer brothers are from the area we moved to. Nice little Easter eggs. Oh, nice. Yeah, I'm, I'm uh, honestly, I'm watching it over again. <laughs> I just finished season one. I'm starting season two. Okay, let's cut. And I'm just about ready to wrap today's stream up. Oh my gosh, this guy, every time I zoom out, it just makes me laugh. <laughs> and I can't wait to get his little hairs on his head. I need to make his ears bigger now that I'm looking at it. So, all right, guys, um, that's about going to do it for me today. Thank you so, so much for hanging out with me as I sculpt along with this guy. I, I hope to say as you sculpt along with me, I don't, I hope you were not everybody does and that's okay. It looks like a depressed sausage. <laughs> oh, that's, that's hilarious. <laughs> oh, thanks Kenya. Thank you. Thank you. Awesome. Well guys have a wonderful week. And, uh, as always, I give away these brushes for free. So, if you want to grab these brushes, you can head on over to 3dcharacterworkshop.com and grab them. Um, I, it comes with this user interface, my, uh, my custom menu, my ruler file, all that stuff, I give it away for free. So if you wanna go check it out, you can grab it over there. And um, I also teach an online course, it's called the 3D Character Workshop, where I walk you through how to make characters like this from start to finish, full body, uh, for 3d printing game characters, all that kind of stuff. So, uh, yeah, if you want to check that out, it's over there. And lastly, I have an acceleration program as well. If you want to learn some more about that, it's a group coaching call where I help you get through the course faster and give you feedback on your portfolio and your characters. So if you're interested in that, um, feel free to email me shane.olson at 3dcharacterworkshop.com. All right, guys, thanks again. 
Have a wonderful week and we will see you next Monday. All right, take care. Stay safe and we'll see you then. Bye.